Okay, is everyone ready to begin? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, welcome to tonight's Planning and Development Control Committee meeting. My name is Councillor Omid Miri. I'm the chair of the committee. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd like to remind all participants of a few housekeeping points before we begin. The fire exit is towards the back in the lift lobby and down the stairs, and there are no fire alarm tests scheduled for tonight. Uh, toilets are also at the back in the lift lobby, and this meeting is being live streamed. So I now move to item one on the agenda, which is apologies for absence, and I've received no apologies for absence. Moving on to item two, which is declaration of interests. Yes, uh, Councillor Carmel. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Whilst not in declarable interest, I think it's only uh, right and proper in the interests of openness and transparency uh, with regard to the Stamford Bridge application to state that I am a Chelsea fan. But since I do not hold a season ticket and haven't for well over a decade, uh, I believe it falls under the exemption. So I shall remain and vote. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Any you very others? Much, yeah. um, and I'll say that I've um, submitted a separate um, objection to a licensing uh, application done by GLCFC, uh, which I understand is a totally separate matter to what's under discussion tonight. So I shall likewise stay and vote. Okay, thank you very much. Any other comments, declarations? No? Okay, great, thank you. And now we move on to item three, which is minutes of the meeting held on the 6th of December, 2022. Are the minutes of the previous meeting agreed? Okay, all agreed. That can be noted, please. Thank you. And that brings us to item four, which is 260 to 262 North End Road. And can the presenting officer, Roya Sagba Power, please introduce the report? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just going to share my screen. Okay, so this application site relates to number 260 to 262 North End Road. It involves a plan application for the demolition of the existing building on the site, a replacement building that is part one, part two, sorry, part one, part three, part four, and part five story to provide one retail unit, uh, some office floor space, and nine residential units. To draw your attention, first of all, to the addendum, uh, there's some items there which I'll just draw to your attention. Most of them are just corrections. Uh, the recommendations refer to the chief planning officer. This should be replaced with uh, the new title of director of planning and property. Uh, and there's a new condition that's been added, condition 41, which relates to materials to be submitted. The site is outlined in red. It's on the eastern side of, sorry, western side of North End Road, uh, highlighted in red, uh, and it's outside of the conservation area, which is on the opposite side of the road, Hashton Green, which is Settlescombe Conservation Area. Um, it fronts North End Road, which is within the town centre, within Fulham Regeneration Area, uh, and it's basically a shop, shopping parade uh, within the centre. This is an aerial shot. You can see North in the site is highlighted in red, uh, fronting North End Road. It projects towards the rear. In the rear background, you've got the Clement Atley Estate and circulation space to the flats and also a car park. Uh, and you can see the buildings along uh, North End Road, which are ranged between sort of three and three store, two and three stories. This is just a closer shot of the same site. So you can see it's the one with the main flat roof. Uh, with the shutters in uh, blue and white on the front uh, and the parking area to the rear. This is just a view really from the rear. So you can see the parking area and circulation space uh, from the rear elevation. This is a kind of before and after scenario. So the top left image is the existing shot looking uh, down at North End Road towards uh, Fulham Town Centre. 
the main Broadway. And then the image on the right is the proposed development inserted in CGI between the co-op building and the building adjacent. So you can see it's got uh, three stories and then a setback at fourth floor and then the top floor, which is set well back from the high street. This is a view looking the other way. At the moment, you'll see that the building, you can see the sign, which is the gym, easy gym. Uh, just in front of that is the site itself on the left-hand side. Uh, and the proposed building would actually bring the building forward to match the building line of the gym building adjacent. This is a view from the rear. So again, the image on the left is what's there at the moment, uh, and this is what's proposed. So the sort of four-story elements and five-story elements are towards the rear of the site, uh, which is moving towards where the Clement Atley estate is. It's just a 3D image showing you where the main uses are. The sort of yellow is the um, retail units, the blue is the office space, uh, and the sort of salmon color is the residential. So by way of background, we, this application follows on from an application that was refused under delegated powers in 2021, I believe. Um, there were four reasons for refusal, one relating to housing capacity uh, not being optimized and no affordable housing provision. Second one was to do with design. Uh, third one was to do with the unsafe communal entrance for residential occupiers. And then the fourth one was lack of uh, outdoor amenity space. This application was subject to an appeal. Uh, the appeal was dismissed, but only on one ground, uh, which and that was in relation to the um, access arrangements for the residential occupiers, which are deemed to be unsafe. As it stands, there's no objections to the current proposals. We sent out something in the order of 500 letters to neighbors, uh, as well as site and press notices. We've had no objections. So focusing down on the appeal uh, refusal, you can see the access highlighted with a circle. That would have been the primary access from North End Road. This has been revised in the current proposals. This is a plan layout. <clears throat> so the top image is, if you like, on the right-hand side, the entrance from North End Road, and the area in blue highlighted is it, the alleyway that projects towards the rear of the site. That was the principal access to the residential properties, uh, which were accessed at the rear of the site. Um, not ideal. Uh, so the bottom image is the revised version. So you can see again on the right hand side, there's an entrance to the uh, residential uh, element of the building along North End Road. There's also a separate office uh, entrance along North End Road and a retail entrance on North End Road. So it's much better layout and more safe as it were uh, but there's still another entrance if you like a secondary entrance that's available along the alleyway this is the elevation along north end road and you can see the three entrances i spoke about at ground floor the shop the office and the residential with the residential with the offices above uh, and then beyond that at the top floor and to the rear of the site is the residential element this is a view taking uh, into account the, if you like, from the right hand side is North End Road towards the rear of the site where you've got this sort of five story residential element. Uh, and then there are some contributions which are proposed as part of this development. There's uh, some contributions towards skills and employment, uh, and there's some uh, <coughs> contributions towards uh, the travel man, travel plan monitoring and air dust quality management plan, as well as it being car free development. So the recommendation is that the application be uh, approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we have one speaker in support. We have uh, Chris Brady, and you have three minutes. Uh, whenever you're ready. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, councillors, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you this evening. My name is Chris Brady, an Associate Director at Savoy's Planning and a member of the RTPI. I am acting as the planning agent on behalf of the applicant. As you will see, this is a, uh, 
a retail building of low architectural quality in a highly accessible town centre location, which is underused and outmoded. The application will deliver 281 square metres of high quality retail floor space at ground floor level and nearly 400 square metres of new high quality energy efficient and flexible office floor space across three levels above that. Um, this is in an area of Hammersmith and Fulham where there is a shortfall of such office floor space. The scheme also proposes nine residential units across the upper floors, which will comprise a mix of homes, including two studios, three one beds, three two beds, and a three bedroom family size unit. One of the bedrooms is also a wheelchair accessible dwelling. The site has recent planning history and the latest proposals have been delivered um, in direct response to those previous planning refusals and the subsequent appeal decision. Under the previous application and the subsequent, subsequent appeal, the principle of demolition, the quantum of development, land use, the development height, scale, massing, design appearance, as well as townscape and heritage impacts, unit mix, and impact on neighbouring amenity were all considered as acceptable by either the council or the inspector. So in response to the comments made, both at application and appeal stage, um, updates have been incorporated to the residential access, um, to the front of the building to ensure that safe access is available for future occupants. Uh, there was a previous recess Connolly Connolade at the front of the building as well, which has been removed, and um, also improvements have been made into the amenity space provision. Uh, this is so that each benefit now benefits from policy compliant levels of private amenity space. Given the excellent PTAL public transport accessible level, level of the site, the site is car free and delivers significant amounts of cycle parking in excess of policy requirements. Uh, this is within a cycle store, which is to the rear of the building. We've uh, prepared a range of technical reports to support the application, including a fire statement, energy and sustainability strategy, uh, drainage strategy, and construction logistics plan. And these reports have all been prepared by experts in their field with necessary chargeships and qualifications. And the council's experts have also reviewed these and found these to be acceptable. So to summarize, the redevelopment of this existing low quality building will provide a mixed use um, and result in the following, a mixed use development even resulting in the following benefits. So retail floor space to maintain the active frontage along North End Road, high quality office floor space in an area with a deficit of office provision, nine high quality residential units along with family and wheelchair accessible units, urban greening, greening through the provision of rooftop landscaping and use of renewable sources of energy, including heat pumps and solar panels. Uh, a car-free development with policy compliant provision of cycle parking is also proposed. National, regional and landing policy encourages making best use of such sites, um, particularly in accessible locations as these. So we respectfully request that this policy compliant scheme is approved tonight. Myself and the project architect, Ziev, is, is here tonight. Um, we're happy to answer any questions if there is time for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Okay, now we can move to committee members' uh, questions to officers for clarification. I do see hands up, so I'll go to Councillor Carmel. Take it away. Thank you. I'll, I'll be relatively brief and a couple of points and uh, a, a, a couple of questions that are simple answers rather than long, drawn-out ones. Um, as members have been on this committee for a while will know, I do have a predisposition against any application which is for nine units. However, it is not a predetermination, and I will uh, decide this particular one on its merits. Um, the, first, the first one is just on the speech by Mr. Uh, Brady. He said that the PTAL um, in this area is excellent. That's not true, is it? It's PTAL 4, not PTAL 6A or B. Yes, that's correct. It's PTAL 4. It's in the addendum. So it's still very good. Um, and it's town centre location. So yeah, factually, that's correct. Yeah, so it wasn't, wasn't correct. Um, um, he 
also talked about the deficit of office provision in the area. Is this a protected retail area? The North End Road is one of the key shopping areas of, uh, of Fulham and indeed famed for its market. Yeah, I think the retail on the ground floor is being provided in accordance with the retail objectives. Uh, the office space that's provided will be on the upper floors. Uh, and we have obviously policies which try to encourage office and residential in this uh, town centre location. Uh, and um, in that respect, the, the proposals are policy compliant. Yeah. Um, and just as a personal observation, and I notice the... Uh, stretching of the term transition in the uh, design of this building. Uh, but when it comes to the uh, delegated decision on the previous application, uh, I have to say that I would have agreed with officers had it come to committee about the design being overly dominant and incongruous. And I grew up just around the corner from this. Uh, and so I, I, I wholly agree. However, the planning inspector on the day decided differently and that sort of rather manacles um, uh, me as a committee member when it comes to voting against the scheme. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Carmel. Um, Councillor Chabot Verdier. Yep. Um, thank you, Chair. I just had two questions. The first is the next door to this development um, is a gym currently. Um, if that remains open, how does the construction plan um, address the fact that particle emissions and may impact the health of those working out obviously all residents around but in particular as people exercise taking more air and it goes deeper into the lungs thank you uh well there is an air quality dust management plan that will be submitted and secured by condition there's also a construction uh, management plan that will require some air quality uh details to be submitted uh, and those are secured by condition Thank you. And the second question was around transport. So there's a parking lot at the back. Um, does that mean that any flats on there would get access to that parking spot, um, rights to park on it? And how are you encouraging um, people to move about on sustainable transportation? Because obviously Northern Road is a very tight road. And if we're building more houses, then we're increasing pressure on transport there. So the car park to the rear is a public car park. Uh, and say again? Yes, <laughs> it's public car park uh, and uh, you need to pay to go to use it. Uh, there are some access rights across the site for the applicants to uh, use that area of the site, but it's also um, the development would be car free. So that would be secured by the Section 106 legal agreement. So they basically wouldn't be able to have a parking permit. Thank you. Um, Am I right in understanding, maybe Councillor Short, but yeah, you, you were also referring to public transport, pressures on the public transport as well. Is there, is there something you could you could say about that? Yeah, I mean, it is in the town centre. Uh, government's uh, national legislation and uh, advice encourages um, location of more residential in town centres, uh, increasing density to try and help the high street, in, as a matter of fact. And if this is, you know, there's lots of services, as you can see from the images in the presentation, because it's on the high street, the shops would benefit from those residents being there, because local shops to them. Uh, so, and our general push is to try and get more residential in town centres, uh, to try and increase the activity, you know, uh, and commercial viability of the shops that use that. So, the fact that you would be relying on public transport is not a bad thing uh, because public transport is the preferred, more sustainable means of transport rather than cars, which is something we want to move away from private vehicles. Yeah, thank you. And, and presumably this will mean, um, you know, more income for TfL, which will mean, you know, obviously that's outside of your, your purview, but, but great, greater use of uh, public transport is, is a good thing for many reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Great. One yeah. public benefit. Absolutely. So I'm going to go to Councillor Harcourt, then I'll come to Councillor Pascal Tuguri. Thank you, Chair. Just a, a few questions. Um, beginning with um, Mr. Brady referenced um, shortfall of office space. Have we done any research in the area uh, to verify that there is a shortfall of office space? My concern being, of course, as per what Councillor Carmel has said about nine units rather than the 10, and which would then take us into affordable housing, uh, why uh, could the office space not have been used as a, another unit? 
Yeah, uh, in terms of policy, <clears throat> the policies in our local plan encourage both residential and offices uh, above retail, uh, and there's no sort of priority as such. They You can either have one or the other. Uh, in terms of affordable housing, if obviously the uh, trigger was uh, of 10 was hit, there would be a requirement to provide affordable housing. Uh, and in this case, uh, the actual overall floor space of the development is less than a thousand square meters. And so we have in our supporting text to the affordable housing policy uh, statements, which encourage just to try and negotiate for affordable housing provision if we think that uh, the applicant hasn't provided uh, the right level of um, or deliberately provided large units or their scope in terms of design to provide more units. But in this particular case, um, it's considered that the scope of the uh, site the constraints, uh, it's setting on the frontage, you know, basically about three to four stories high as a reasonable. If you went any higher than that, you'd start to get a matting, which is disrupts the rhythm along the frontage. So there's a design consideration there. Uh, and then in terms of converting the office space, um, there's no requirement for them to actually make that office space residential uh, or to try and convert it to residential from our perspective. They can either have office or residential and we have to consider the proposals on its merits so that's what they've submitted the inspector made it quite clear in his decision that um they can do either or there's no i say priority as such one over the other as a result that means that if um we get a scheme that's nine units in this particular case and we think it's acceptable in design terms then we have to look at that but in terms of the actual number of units we've looked at um this specific point with the applicant and tried to push them towards creating another unit and they were quite clear with us that they didn't want to create any more units uh, and it's policy compliant uh, so from from our purposes we put a condition on which prevents them changing the office space to um, residential so we could then uh, in this case law to address this review that at a later date Okay, thank you very much for that um, reply. Um, if um, the reason I ask about other uh, office space in the area is that should it turn out that um, this ends up remaining vacant for some time and the applicant wishes to convert the, the office space to residential, what, what then becomes the situation? Is it a new planning application? How does that affect it? It's then 10, it becomes 10 units, or is that something that is... Uh, out of out of a uh, kilter now or, or what i'm not quite sure what the situation would be should that happen yeah we'd we'd i mean because there's a condition attached we'd have to have a new application uh they'd have to have evidence to demonstrate that there's no need for that office space hence the reason why that condition has been attached to try and ensure that that doesn't happen obviously a new application would be considered on its own merits so but in tandem with what's happened previously okay a couple more questions um, you've mentioned on a couple of occasions um, um, construction management plans, construction logistics and such like. Um, North End Road, as you know, is a rather bu busy but also rather narrow thoroughfare with a, a market on one side, lots of people and all the rest of it. Where are the construction vehicles going to go? Because you can hardly park a scaffold lorry in North End Road for any length of time without causing absolute congestion, uh, the buses wouldn't be able to get past, etc. Um, okay, so there are, as you know from the photographs, there's some uh, uh, circulation space to the rear of the site, there's a car park, uh, and the construction uh, uh, logistics plan hasn't been submitted yet, but a condition will be attached to ensure that some um, satisfactory arrangements will be in place. Um, you know, there's a history of developments taking place along North End Road and um, our highways officers are they not represented tonight have assured us certainly that that will be coordinated with other developments along North End Road to sort of safeguard the interests of existing users on North End Road. Thanks. Um, so have we done the usual sort of swept path analysis to make sure that construction lorries can get around there? Because I can recall when I've been down Kuma Place and looking into the car park there, there's a wall at the end of Kuma Place where you turn right, mm -hmm. which seemed to be regularly demolished by vehicles that didn't quite manage to negotiate the, the turning. So are we clear that there is adequate space for this? 
Well, the highways officers assure us that they would need to, and we, we know this from the conditions, they would need to be submit details which are compliant and they'd have to have satisfactory circulation space. If that's not achieved, then obviously this wouldn't go forward. But from what we know so far, it, that's what they've been exploring. That's the sort of arrangement they're looking to do. Okay, thanks. Two more questions um, on totally different topics. Are there any confirmed takers for the either the office space or the retail unit? The last thing obviously we'd want is a, an, um, a, another empty retail unit. Not as far as I'm aware, no. It's not in the condition that uh, there needs to be a signed contract before? No, we, we haven't put that in and that's not normally something that we would do. Um, but, you know, if we were aware of mm. occupiers, that would be something that obviously we could report to you, but we're not aware of that. Um, it could be a speculative development. I do see that in some uh, planning applications, not necessarily here, but elsewhere. Mm. Uh, where you know before the development goes ahead rather than uh, finding you know there's some sort of succession plan in place that there is um some sort of contract in place for the occupation of a retail unit or something like that rather than leave things blank but it's not there the final question then is around uh, carbon reduction and carbon footprint so it's good to see the air, the air, um source heat pumps and the um solar panels and such like but do we have any figures for the carbon reduction uh, I apologise, I don't have them to hand, but um, uh, there will be a report uh, submitted. So look. You know, I, I'm, I asked this, and it's something I would like to see in all our reports, for because, as you know, we have declared a climate emergency, and uh, that is one of the key priorities for this council, and therefore I would expect to see figures along those lines on uh, certainly any new build. Um, just give the officers a chance to respond and then then I'll then I'll come to you, then I'll come to Councillor Pascu Tibori. If Councillor Harcourt's done. Yes. Yeah, and we're just waiting for the uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a figure, um, but there are conditions attached which talk about zero emissions heating and energy plant, but I don't have a figure to help, and unfortunately. Oh, sorry, was there back echo? Yeah. Echo? Is that better? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I don't have any figures to hand, unfortunately. Um, sorry, could you uh, let me have them later? Yes, I can do that. Yeah, thank you. If Councillor Pascadura is okay, okay with Councillor Carmel coming in with just a follow-up question, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, um, it was with regard to the uh, uh, condition um, about flipping the office into into Resi. Are you confident that Condition Fifteen, which I believe is the one that you're seeking to rely on, since it only refers to aerials, antennae, satellite dishes, or re related telecommunications equipment uh, will be sufficient to prevent the office being flipped? Or have I missed another condition that, uh, that uh, as I was going through, I missed? Uh, it's condition 40, uh, which talks about uh, restricting the use of the commercial element and makes it explicit that the retail should only be used for retail and the office should only be used for office. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I did just have one follow-up question um, with regards to uh, the construction um, of the of the sites. Is Kuma Place the only entryway for the construction vehicles into that back space? It is the obvious route, right. uh, but there are possible alternatives which you know would involve going through the estate. I'm pretty sure we wouldn't want to encourage that, but we haven't got any details yet of, of how that is going to manifest itself. So until we get that, we can't really say, but certainly they've got to submit those details to us beforehand. Sure, because I would be concerned if they were going through the estate and through a, through a built up residential area. So um, obviously we don't know the details, but but is what you're saying that it's unlikely for it to go through the estate? Correct. Because yeah. it's not okay. something we would encourage. We would okay. encourage them to go along Kuma. Uh, places so long as the arrangements are satisfactory and they're using suitable size vehicles mm. you know it should work but we don't have any details yet 
Sure, and uh, apologies, Councillor Vasquez. Um, similar question to Councillor Harcourt's question um, about the future tenants of the commercial space. Do we know if the residential units are for sale or for rent, or will be for sale or for rent? Uh, don't have any details. I just know that it's nine units. I'm assuming that they'll be for sale, but obviously they could be here either. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your patience, Councillor Vasquez. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, a couple of questions, if I may. Um, firstly, what is, if anything, is going to be done about what remains a pretty dark and depressing passageway to the left of the building? It was still going to be used for access. So it's an existing arrangement, uh, mm -hmm. which will just be retained. It's actually outside of the site ownership as it were because it's a public footpath mm -hmm. so it will be retained um yeah brilliant thank you um well one slight area of concern for me is the front doors of the residential element which as far as i can see will um open straight on to uh, the pavement so obviously if you've got quite a bit of activity going on there you know whether it's maneuvering someone in a pram or a wheelchair out of the window out, out of the sorry out of the uh out of front doors uh or having a large piece of furniture delivered um, how um, how is that going to tally with what is a really busy pavement? Bearing in mind that quite often you'll have uh, front doors in these kind of uh, situations recessed. So you can still access uh, the rear of the site mm -hmm. uh, from Puma Place, uh, and you can access obviously from the alleyway. Uh, and then if you can see this image that's there at the mm -hmm. moment. Although there's an access from North End Road from the right and the corridor, which goes to the stairs and a lift at the back, you can still access from the rear. So there's a loading bay at the rear uh, and there's a covered entrance at the rear. So you can still get through that that way rather than having to service from North End Road. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, with regard to uh, the uh, three bedroom property, how big is the balcony? Uh, it's uh, about 12 square metres. Um, normally we would seek to have 36 square meters, mm -hmm. but it's not physically possible to get any more than 12. And the inspector mm -hmm. accepted that in this particular circumstances and the site constraints, that was more than satisfactory. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Um, finally, could you um, give me any details of the potentially contaminated land um, around here, which I note is... Um, yeah, I mean, we didn't, we, our colleagues on the contaminated land team said mm -hmm. that there was potential contamination, but that's presumably because there's a commercial use on mm -hmm. the site and there were commercial uses which historically may be on the site, but they didn't actually provide any details of that. But the key thing is that we've got the conditions to draw mm -hmm. that out and ensure that it's safe for any future occupiers. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any further questions? No, no further questions? No? Okay. Great. So we can move on to voting. And we'll first vote on whether recommendation one in the report is agreed. That's on page nine, that the Director of Planning and Property be authorised to grant permission subject to the conditions listed below. Uh, Councillor Chabot Verdier, will you be voting for, against, or not voting? For. Councillor Harvey? For. Councillor Harcourt? Also for. Councillor Walsh? For. Councillor Susluis? For. Councillor Carmel? Sadly, four. Councillor Pascu de Bury? Four. And I'll also be voting four. So uh, that uh, recommendation is approved. And now we move to recommendation two, which is that the Director of Planning and Property, after consultation with the Assistant Director Legal Services and the Chair of the Planning and Development Control Committee, be authorised to make any minor changes to the proposed heads of terms of the legal agreement or conditions, which may include the variation, addition, or deletion of conditions. Any such changes shall be within their discretion. Councillor Chabot Verdier? Four. Councillor Harvey. Four. Councillor Harcourt. Four. Councillor Walsh. Four. Councillor Suslis. Four. Councillor Carmel. Four. Councillor Pascu Tibore. Four. I'll also be voting four. So that application has been approved. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. We will now move on to item five, which is Stamford Bridge Stadium. And can I ask the presenting officer once again, Roy, to please introduce the report. Thank you, Chair. Just give me a moment.
Okay, so this is an application for a single advert uh, illuminated LED v video screen, uh, seven meters high, four meters wide on the north elevation towards the rear of the site on the Matthew Harding stand. I should first like to draw members' attention to the addendum. Uh, again, there are some corrections to the recommendations where it says Chief Planner, it should say Director of Planning and Property. Uh, also, we received a late letter about the impacts in terms of heritage on conservation areas in the rural borough of Kensington and Chelsea. Uh, during the officer's assessment of the proposals, we considered views from uh, Kensington and Chelsea, but we didn't explicitly refer to the conservation areas in that borough. However, in the presentation, this will be made clear that we've, we've, we've done that and also the addendum uh, in paragraph, so page 49, pages 51 and pages 52 make it explicit that we have taken those into account. Uh, I should also add the reason why this item is coming to committee is because we had 39, actually 40 today, 40 objections uh, we would normally be dealt with under delegated. So you can see the site in the middle with a dot in the middle, Chelsea Football Club, and you've got various uh, stadiums stands around it. Uh, and the frontage is on Fulham Road, the main axis on Fulham Road, uh, and it runs deep towards the north uh, along the railway, overground railway line. Beyond the railway line on the north east side is the Brompton Cemetery, which is in the uh, Royal Borough of Kenton and Chelsea. Uh, and then you've got some various uh, buildings of merit, notably the St. Oswald Stall buildings to the sort of left of the uh, Matthew Harding Stand or to the south of Matthew Harding Stand. Uh, and you've got some nature conservation areas along the railway line. So I just want to point you first to this uh, image because this is really where one of the late objections came from. So you can see the Chelsea Football Club highlighted, and then we've got two conservation areas in Hammersmith and Fulham, the Moore Park Conservation Area and the, uh, what we call, the Billings and Brompton Cutting uh, Conservation Area. So they're identified as numbers 30 and 31. And you can see this slither of green on the borough boundary with um, Royal Borough, Kensington, and Chelsea. That is the Billings and Brompton Cutting Conservation Area, which is in our borough. Then you've got this boundary here, which runs along here, and then to the south on Fulham Road, which is the wider Moor Park uh, conservation area, both of which are in Hammersmith and Fulham. And then on the other side of the boundary, which is delineated in red, you've got uh, two conservation areas. Um, one of them is this uh, called Billings, and it's basically a very small conservation area around these Billings Road, Billings Place, and Billings Street, which is highlighted around here. The other conservation area, which is in uh, KNC, is uh, the Brompton Cemetery, which basically covers the whole of that site. So that gives you a bit of context. This is an aerial shot. So at the top of the image would be the frontage along Fulham uh, Road. And uh, in the foreground of the stay in Stamford Bridges, you've got the, if you like, the north northern part of the site. Uh, and you can see there's Chelsea Football Club Museum and the gym which uh, is quite a significant structure, which obscures the views from the residential properties beyond. And um, you've got the railway sidings and the railway adjacent to the site. And then beyond that, you've got the uh, chapel, for example, in the Brompton Cemetery. Uh, again, this is just going to be a bit of context. You can see the building, which is the museum and the sports center, which is a, quite a significant structure. And the reason for showing you this image is because the sign which is proposed would be pretty much in, the, in this location here, uh, which means that it would be obscured from view for many of the residential occupiers, so they wouldn't be able to see it at all. It's just a map image showing the site in red and then showing in that sort of context where that little pink arrow is where the sign is located. And you can see it's, it's facing north away from the railway line facing towards the building rather than facing towards the railway line or the cemetery. Uh, down below you can see the sort of pictorial image of the uh, indication of where this would be on the Matthew Harding stand. This is what it would look like CGI so it's very much within 
the site. This is a circulation road within the site. It's not a highway that forms part of a public highway. And then this is a view taken from Brompton Cemetery. And what you can see is this boundary wall here is slightly perforated, um, but um, the sign itself, although this is an indication of where it would be, it's it appears as a flat image with actually when you if you can see this line here it actually be splayed away from the um cemetery so it's actually be facing so the museum rather than the actual cemetery itself so there'll be limited views of it so that's the end of the presentation and officers are recommending approval thank you very much um if you could go back to the slideshow in the conservation areas um Number thir 31, is that uninhabited? Yes, that's the railway siding. Right. And what exactly is being conserved there? Uh, I guess it's just a setting and it's adjacent to a conservation area. So okay. if, you know, in our borough, uh, it's adjacent to a, a conservation area on the, to the north, which is in uh Kinsen Chelsea although it's a separate parcel of land mm. it sort of naturally forms part of that wider piece of land so it's like drawing a random line through the cemetery it wouldn't necessarily negate the fact that as a whole uh it still has heritage value so in that context it's got some heritage value right okay okay thank you yeah are there any other questions or comments yes Councillor Kamal thank you uh can you just go back to the CGI of what the screen is going to look like for a second? Um, now, looking at the, the headline on the description, it says seven meters high and four meters width. That looks to me to be seven meters width and four meters high. I think you're right. So yeah. Can I propose that we amend the description? Um, sorry, the, the next question is, I've got all sorts of problems uh, with condition four. Uh, and it looks so amazingly overcomplicated. And I have gone through this more times than I care to mention, trying to drag any sense out of, out of this. I mean, for instance, on a standard Saturday afternoon, uh, it's, you know, three o'clock kickoff, they're out by quarter to five, um, and yet they're allowed to keep it on till 10. Um, and if it's, you know, a 12.30 kickoff, uh, it, it's like that. And all this one hour before and two hours after and this and that and the other. I mean, for instance, I actually looked up this afternoon what time sunset was in uh, late December, you know, the shortest day. Sunsets around 10 to 4 in the afternoon. Um, it's overly complicated. It allows them to have a very large sign operating at times where it's not needed. Can we, can we, is, would it be acceptable to say um, on Chelsea home match days between the hours of seven and 22 hours or 45 minutes after the final whistle, whichever is the long, the shorter. Okay, uh, you've touched on a very um, difficult and what has been a challenging uh, issue for us because the reason why we sort of tried to word it carefully is because um, in the cemetery uh, and in the railway sidings, there is a possibility of there being bats. Uh, and so they are a protected species. And because they're a protected species, um, our ecology officers advise us that the light should be turned off at certain times and uh, hence the wording is trying to sort of deal with that be, you know hours before and after sunset uh and sunrise so that's why that's worded like that and it's it's it, you're probably right it could be probably be worded in a slightly different way and we could probably come back um, to you if if, if, if i if I, I just might make an observation mm. um i know video screens do put out some light but uh, are we going to do enforcement on the floodlights, which are several magnitudes brighter and light up half the cemetery when they're switched on, as opposed to one itty bitty little little video? It's it's. I understand what officers were trying to do, and I understand uh, uh, how they 
tried to word it, but if, if, um, if I may be so bold and without attacking the officer, what they've come up with is bats. <laughs> <laughs> Very fitting. Uh, thanks, um, Councillor. Through the chair, the the football club were keen to have the advertisements illuminated beyond just just after the majority of um, supporters may leave the ground. There's other activities and other stuff going on, and they were keen to have it. So, in terms of any harm from those extended hours, we felt there wasn't any. Uh, that said, our ecology officer was keen that there was additional protection in terms of, I believe, the bat population. So I um, appreciate it's worded um, in a, a fairly complex way, but we felt that this was probably the best way of approaching it. All it simply does, it provides additional protection for the bat population in relation to artificial light, which would be in the winter in respect of sunrise, and then in the summer, in respect of sunset, it just provides that additional protection for those for those hours. It's his face, but I think uh, it could have could have been done better. But anyway, so can I can I formally propose that we amend the description? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, are there any objections to that? No, no objections to that. Okay, can can that be? Uh... And that be taken forward, yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes, Chair. I don't think second. I, we, we don't need. Do we need a proposer and a seconder for amending the description? Yeah. Okay. Proposer and a seconder. Yeah. Sure. Did you want a second or? Yeah. Okay. And do we need to vote on that? Yes. We need to vote on that. Yeah. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. All those against? No. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's been agreed. Sure. Um, okay, now, do we have any other questions? Yeah, Councillor Harcourt. One very, very quick one, and it's probably me being a bit dim, um, but can we go back to the, the plan view of the uh, the, the ground? And can you, because it doesn't, nowhere on that plan have you actually marked where the screen is. I'm a bit, lot, well, no, 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 not that one. The, um, the one which, um, the first one, the first one you show. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, this is illustrative. So, if in terms of context, it's in this location here. You right. see my arrow, and then the plan I showed no, later. That's fine. That's absolutely oh, fine. Okay, yeah. right. It was, yeah. Just wondered where you, I could. I was thinking it was the other corner of that stand. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, Councillor Pascutuori. Thank you very much. Has any engagement been made proactively with the Friends of Brompton Cemetery around us? Uh, not that I'm aware of, we sent out, you know, several uh, consultation letters uh, mm -hmm. to neighbouring properties and interest groups, but I couldn't tell off the top of my head if they were one of the people mm -hmm. that were consulted, but certainly we've done widespread uh, notifications, so, yeah. And would you be able to give an assessment of the nature of the responses you've had from neighbouring properties? Yeah, I mean, it's set out in the report. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, they refer you to the right paragraphs mm -hmm. so it's page 50 yeah uh and uh, paragraph 2.1 onwards um basically talks about the impact on brompton cemetery impact on the conservation areas in our borough uh light pollution um number of adverts presumably that means you know too many they think mm -hmm. uh impact on wildlife after dark which is why the, the, the bat issue came up um use of the screens in relation to licensing because there's a separate licensing application that's come up which uh has been some of the issues were conflated with that but essentially that's about making it clear that the screen would not be used in connection with films and videos uh for and i think there was a, an indication or suggestion that this would generate more antisocial behavior uh, amongst residents uh, or visitors who come to the area um so yeah uh, but it is it. the case that you know this screen would only be visible by people really outside it. Yeah. So if you uh, stood in the stadium mm -hmm. at the back, you'd see it. But if you were outside the stadium at the front, you know, or any residential properties, you wouldn't see it. You might get a very, very oblique view of it from the Brompton Park Cemetery. Thank you very much. And uh, I know this is a speculative question, but um, what... 
what activities would require such a screen to be on at 7 a.m. on a non-match day? I mean, if the club are, you know, got some activities that they are associated with the stand or the stadium, they've got visits, you know, I don't know, it's in their gift. All we try to do is make sure they operate within certain reasonable hours. Mm -hmm. uh, if they operate outside of those hours, then, you know, that of course, seems to be excessive, then that's it. And any such activities would, of course, be separate to um, a licensing application yeah. and approval. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Completely separate to planning, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? No? Okay, then we will move on to voting uh, on recommendation one, which was the same as recommendation one in the last application. Councillor Chavot Verdier, will we be voting for, against, or not voting? For. Councillor Harvey? For. Councillor Harcourt? For. Councillor Walsh? For. Councillor Sousloos? For. Councillor Carmel? For. Councillor Pascal Dubore? For. I'll also be voting for. So that recommendation has been approved. And now we move on to recommendation two, which is on page 46. Councillor Chavot Verdier, for, against, or not voting? For. Councillor Harvey? For. Councillor Harcourt? For. Councillor Walsh? For. Councillor Sousloos? For. Councillor Carmel? For. Councillor Pascu Tibure? For. And I'll also be voting for. So that application has been approved. Thank you very much, Rory. And now we move Thank on. You. Thank you. Now we move on to item six, which is Westfield London Shopping Centre. And can I ask the presenting officer, Neil Egerton, to please introduce the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. This application relates to Westfield Shopping Centre in Aerial Way. And the proposal is for a temporary use of the Relay Square as an ice rink, Christmas tree display, and associated temporary structures for a temporary period between the 1st of November and 31st of January, inclusive on an annual basis for three years, ending January 2025. Uh, just the indication near the site uh, so, so the site sorry uh, um, is up here and then so the context plan there if I can show you my cursor shows the site relay square which is part of the public um, amenity area of Westfield it has been used on numerous occasions in the Christmas period for various uh, Christmas event activities, including the carousel, Christmas market, bars, etc. Um, give some aerial photo, aerial views of the site. Again, showing the, the cursor, showing where the proposal will be. I'll just go through these views reasonably quickly. Um, this aerial view has the, the plan sort of superimposed on it. The rectangular building here is the sort of welcome tent people, where people change and get ready for the skating. Then this is this is the rink area here with the Christmas tree uh, in the middle of that. Again, that's just another image of that. There's sort of slightly more detail. Again, showing the rink and the various bits, various uh, structures. I mean, there's first aid here, there's Zamboni storage, which is the machine used to clean the ice and uh, sort of re-ice it following use, and various other associated structures. Um, the elevation shows the, the Christmas tree here. The, the main structure would be a maximum height of four meters set against the backdrop of the much higher buildings. And then there's some CGI images. There, they can just go through. That's the, uh, the, the, the welcome structure, so you change into your skates and uh, hand them back. And again, 
further image, just showing the and with the Christmas tree again, which would be a maximum of about 41 meters high against the backdrop, obviously, of the John Lewis part of the site. And then just the elevations there in blue showing the uh, proposal. And again, again, there's just some photographs here from its recent installation showing the tree and the structures in place. Um, offers a supportive of the proposal, which just seeks to sort of boost boost Westfield and provides this Christmas entertainment space um, for the for the local area for the area and those using the site. So it's recommended the planning permission is approved for the period requested. The couple of small um, type typos on the addendum that I'll just bring your attention to. But apart from that, officers recommend approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Neil. Um, do we have any questions or comments? No questions or comments. Okay, great. So we will move on to recommendation one, uh, which is on page 56. Councillor Chabot Verdier? Four. Councillor Harvey? Four. Councillor Harcourt? Four. Councillor Walsh? Four. Councillor Sousloos? Four. Councillor Carmel? Four. Councillor Pasquet Tuboré. Four. I'll also be voting four. Now we move on to recommendation two, which is also on page 56. Councillor Chavot Verdier. Four. Councillor Harvey. Four. Councillor Harcourt. Four. Councillor Walsh. Four. Councillor Sustis. Four. Councillor Carmel. Four. Councillor Pasquet Tuboré. Four. I also vote four. So the application has been approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of the meeting. I'd like to thank everyone for attending or watching tonight's meeting. The draft minutes of this meeting will be published on our website shortly. These will be formally approved at our next meeting on the 18th of April, 2023. And if you have any queries concerning the applications in the interim, please contact the case officer in the application report. Thank you.